I was going to open the stream with a tier list thing, like do a tier list, list all the majors, you know, which ones were best, which ones were good, blah, blah, blah. but uh, I'll just say right out the gate, uh, this was a hugely disappointing major. I don't think I don't think any of us can get around that. I, I don't think anybody can say otherwise. We were promised something that didn't turn up. ESL prioritized attendees over the at home broadcast which we'll talk about in a moment that's a balancing act is that fine to do and ultimately we didn't break any viewership records with it which people thought we might all these claims that it's like the biggest major of all time i don't know by what metric that is because i heard chad on his podcast talking counter or, or whatever it's called uh where it say it, it sold the most tickets and i don't know i'd i'd really like to see all the data from pgl because antwerp also so said it sold all the tickets and i think they had a bigger stadium so to call this the biggest major of all time feels like massive cope which it just turns out that uh, you're, you're gonna see plenty of that yeah i mean ultimately where would I rank this? I mean, I, it's definitely not as bad as London Face It. Uh, the London Face It major was uh, was ridiculously poor for a number of reasons. Let's not forget we lost an entire day to tech problems while, uh, you know, ISP going out. The events were constantly marred by in-game problems because of a Valve patch that broke the game, which we couldn't wait to fix. So no fault to Face It there. But games were literally decided by a game-breaking bug at the Major. The broadcast wasn't great. Their idea of shoulder content was paying a chicken. <laughs> you know, we had, a, we had a chicken making more than some of the casters or analysts. So, yeah, it, that will always be the worst one. Now we start getting into the debate because I always thought Krakow was uh, all, then the next worst, probably. Because, you know, it. but like, I, I looked at the atmosphere when they gave the trophy over to Gambit and it was way better than the atmosphere for out uh for, for outsiders in a way and i don't know if that was just the audio mix or something but so i don't know so rio for me if it star ladder was a disgrace as well dog shit final tech problems schedule problems star ladder were absolute assholes to all of the community uh i think as well there was some talent payment problems i'd be willing to put rio outside of the bottom three all told but the idea that rio was good uh is ridiculous it's not even a mid-major for me it is definitely one of the most underwhelming many of many of the factors that make it underwhelming are beyond esl's control the standard of counter-strike played here for example was dog shit and anyone who says otherwise like again i, I think i've got the post there was some guy going just enjoy the wonderful count there was no wonderful counter strike played at this event well barely any ultimately for me it didn't even feel like a major it had no feel of the major outside of a couple of moments when furia were playing when you wanted to believe that was going to translate to the rest of the event and it didn't so it's it's a bottom five major for me maybe bottom four and as i wrote in my article which we'll talk about in a little bit all of the problems with it uh from a home broadcast perspective stemmed from ESL's desire to deliver this unparalleled live experience and treat it like a Gowles fan fest. Which, by the way, uh, I got told after I'd written the article, someone messaged me and said the Gowles fan fest was like sort of set up as a secondary thought because they were worried about people complaining about there not being enough tickets. So they set up the fan fest to enable fans who weren't going to go into the stadium to have something to do. But because those tickets were cheaper and because Gowles was there, people wanted to do that instead not as well of so i mean that's just staggering incompetence if that's true so let's let's start with uh and this is a mess because there's so much to talk about so let's just start kind of like wherever wherever we can and try and pick it all apart so the first thing uh that uh, is worth talking about uh is there was an unbelievable and i mean an unbelievable uh, amount of tech problems in these games particularly back at the challenger stage now one of the things i i just have never been able to kind of grasp is i don't know why this keeps happening i don't know why we end up with all of these problems at these events i thought we were past this but to esl's credit yes they fixed everything super quick uh but to, to esl's demerit this happened right the way through to the finals tech problems where the game had to be stopped people were disconnecting from the servers 
And I don't know. It felt like that it was happening an incredible amount of times for reasons it seems nobody understood now if you have tech problems and you solve them quickly yeah that's a good thing tech problems are going to happen but if tech problems are consistently happening from start to finish of the tournament something's wrong with the setup for me so anyway you can see here don hassey on twitter recognized it and said a crash or two was normal at most events but multiple per day since day one is extremely worrying especially in these critical games i hope yourself gets this sorted before the next stage imagine a disconnect issue like shiro had at 17 17 but on the third map of the grand final and what that refers to is obviously there was a cloud nine match where shiro uh, literally lagged out during an essential component everyone seems to have forgotten about this like everyone's just forgotten that that actually happened because obviously it was in the earlier stage of the tournament and uh, had that happened in a final or a quarterfinal or you know any of the legend stage i think people would be absolutely outraged and the esl would be um you know getting completely uh, wrecked uh, there was also as we'll talk about as well because it happened to og a disproportionate amount of times there was a three on three in one of the games where three people just got disconnected and the round counted because of the rules so yeah just sort of cr uh, crazy you've had all these problems throughout this tournament and again it's become a sideshow because of all the talk uh, about the about the crowd so oh yeah and sorry they actually were meant that round was meant to be on it but then there's a rule that says if you cannot determine the outcome of a round based on what was about to happen you replay the round irrespective of the d damage rule so it got replayed even though most people thought it should have counted there was a rule for it in the rule book but all of those things we'd still be talking about them today if it wasn't for the crowd stuff just to show you the start of like delusional takes obviously we went to brazil amid a major transformative election while this major was on there was bolsonaro versus lula i won't get into all of that stuff and bore you with it why it was important why it was significant why it was likely to generate unrest but it, that was happening while the event was on a lot of people thought this is going to spill over potentially into some violence into some protests well i mean I feel the more likely outcome would have been if Bolsonaro had won, that would have certainly happened. Uh, Bolsonaro didn't win. Lula won. And Bolsonaro, despite not conceding and saying he wants a recount done by the military, which was stoking tensions, uh, ultimately there was, a, there was some protests, but not as widespread or as bad as what we thought. And uh, he subsequently agreed to a transference of power. In fact, just to get this out the way, there were a lot of people saying we were we were worried about having an event in Rio in general because of the high crime rates, because it's a major city in Brazil, um, and especially at a particularly tumultuous time in Brazilian history and culture. Uh, but fortunately, there were no major incidents to, to talk about. Indeed, the as we'll get to, the irony isn't lost on me that seemingly the ma the, the major violent event at the uh, at the uh, event itself was uh, committed by a canadian commentator as opposed to a brazilian protester so worth worth balancing that in there anyway first delusional take i saw was um yeah listen maybe the servers keep going down due to the social unrest surrounding the presidential election well that by the way is from a guy who professes to be an it specialist so <laughs> You know, who knew? Who knew that uh, uh, so, social upheaval causes your Counter-Strike to crash? If there's ever an election in your country and you're trying to play Counter-Strike, probably just uh, just pause it. Don't play while the election's on. Wait for the results are in and stop the steal. But anyway, so just to, to get into one of the funnier examples of the things that happened, Dexter lost his mind and went on Twitter and was basically like saying, oh, I had problems, you know, and ESL didn't help me. Uh, and he, I think he subsequently deleted these tweets. But I'll just, uh, I'll bring up the Reddit thread about them. Because there was one two-hour tech break involving OG. And nobody could get to the bottom of what it was. And so he went and he complained about it. And you can see here. Sponge responded and said, is there a reason you're skewing the truth on social media? Uh, so, so egregious were the claims that uh, Apollo, who we now know is in charge of all the Counter-Strike projects over at ESL, former legendary StarCraft cast, the former StarCraft player, if you go back far enough, um, said, and by the, by the way, one of the guys who taught me how to host, 
uh, said, we will respond properly to this shortly. This isn't a fair portrayal of how these situations are handled and how we responded to support Dexter when he needed it. And uh, I think there was a flying DJ or crying BJ in there as well. And uh, anyway, the long and the short was Dexter had a command in his config that was out of date so anytime he inspected a particular skin which he had equipped it would crash his game and so basically he was moaning for two hours about how esl didn't help him when he was the cause of the problem which is just typical player bullshit by the way if you've ever worked an event so that was the thing uh, then we started talking about the crowd. The crowd suddenly comes into sharp focus. Let's just start with this, and we can have a we can have a debate around this particular topic. In the first stadium, which had like a four thousand four thousand two hundred seat capacity for the first stage, you can see here, Airhorn guy needs to slow it down a little bit. There was a guy in the crowd who had like an air horn. There were people in the crowd with voo voo zailers, and it was triggering everyone. Uh, at home now look i think when you go to an event and you're in the crowd you obviously have uh, you have to have an understanding about what you're doing and how it can be perceived as annoying not just people around you but obviously people watching the game you know when you're a football fan you don't do the same chant over and over again from start to finish you don't do things that are considered irritating or you try not to uh but equally as well if you go to an event you're certainly entitled to make noise and you should make noise you know you should show your appreciation for people in the crowd so i didn't really see this as a valid complaint I didn't really see this as a valid complaint at all. I don't think complaining about the Vuvu Zailers or the Airhorn guy. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I remember that World Cup in South Africa, right? Where it was literally non stop Vuvu Zailers, dumb and dumber, want to hear the most annoying noise of all time. <laughs> just for 90 minutes that was all that was all it was while you were trying to watch a football game so was it as annoying as that no was it fuck it was certainly mildly irritating at times but at the end of the day will i take a guy with an air horn over a Stralis fan saying let's go Stralis, let's go for you know however long a map lasts yes absolutely so this to me invalid complaint but this was the start of stuff creeping in people started to ooh, do, do, do. the crowd the crowd oh it's kind of good but it's annoying me and as you'll see yeah there was a little bit of an aspect where you can't win so challenger stage there's brazilian teams at this stage of the tournament in the challenger stage and they were doing what can generously be described as being over exuberant when brazilian teams were playing and what do i mean by over exuberant well look as has happened in cs tournaments since time immemorial every time there was uh someone around a corner or every time a crosshair swept over where someone was hiding or every time a ninja d fuse was being attempted the crowd the crowd would spoil it it's been that way ever since the famous spawn clip remember the famous spawn clip is him attempting a ninja defuse which would have absolutely worked if the crowd had just shut the fuck up the crowd ruins everything all crowds ruin everything but you have to let them in without the crowd is there even a game happening so that's what happened uh, for large parts of when the brazilian teams were playing now for me it crossed the line of just genuine over exuberance genuine enthusiasm into proactively cheating for the brazilian teams and look this has been explained multiple times but for those who don't know about this here's what you do when you're a player when you press to talk it cancels out some of the noise in your headset so you can hear people answering you but you can use that as a technique to hear if the crowd is making any noise so when you sweep your crosshair right over where people are and the crowd are going whoa, whoa, and you've got your push to talk button press down you can hear it so you know and players use this technique to glean information about where people are and they've always done it right it's just one of those things it comes with the game what you have to do as a tournament operator and we've done this i've done this we did it at e-league we did it in boston there were some people cheating at boston i believe for um whichever iteration of the brazilian team was there as well and probably sometimes for cloud nine we all we we had a cloud nine game in the regular e-league season where somebody cheated and we said we we stopped we waited until half time and we told that individual you do it again you're thrown out and we told everybody in the crowd anybody that does this is thrown out our floor manager did it we were very regimented on that because you have to be it 
it's about the integrity of the game. So it's all, you, you will never stop fans doing this. Never. Understand that. And it's not just Brazilian fans who do that do it, even though, inarguably, this is the most egregious example we've seen in Counter-Strike. Probably since the, that clip of the Virtus Pro fans cheating with Go A, Go B on the sign. It's not good for the game. And so that was happening every time a Brazilian team uh, started to play. Now, ESL said, what we'll do is we're going to take measures to combat the influence that they have. This is Ryan at Dust2 from Dust2 Media. He said, to combat fan influence, ESL has removed both the minimap and the X-ray from the in-stadium broadcast. And he offers a hat tip to the Brazilian journalist, uh, Roque. Uh, and you can see, look, they've done that. Now... That, to me, is a good compromise when you have this particular type of incident come up because what it, what it enables you to do is it enables you to remove the ability for the crowd to cheat without having to address the crowd directly or take punitive measures against the crowd directly. If anything, it should reduce tensions, right? But... It didn't in this instance, and the reason it didn't reduce tensions and the reason people got upset about it was because Gaules addressed it directly to the crowd. Now, I put this up in my article, which you can read on uh, Deserto. It's called CSGO's Most Hyped Major Held Hostage by the Gaules Show. And you can go and read it up. It's pretty long. It was nearly 4,000 words. I tried to be as concise as possible, but there was so much going on. And so just to read you the quote of what he said, this is what he said to the crowd right to the crowd it's a shame that the biggest cs broadcast in the world doesn't have x-ray and that esl doesn't have the structure to put x-ray on for the internet but without x-ray in the arena and okay that might be a valid criticism i think that might be a valid criticism you know yeah why can't they why didn't they think about that it was obvious to anyone what was going to happen but then he started going, like, we're not cheating anyway. <laughs> if they think we're calling uh, and they don't understand Portuguese, it's time for them to learn Portuguese. They'll never understand what it's like to be Brazilian. Now, someone go and fucking translate this and tell ESL what I said. The crowd now knew ESL think you're a bunch of cheaters. And all throughout this event, Gaules, Gaules, Gaules. And every time Gaules got an opportunity to speak about Counter-Strike, he just said, like, you will never understand. He literally repeated this line throughout the tournament. Uh, you will never understand what it is to be Brazilian. And i got to say, I find this ridiculous because for, it's, it's divisive in and of itself. It's a really divisive phrase to say. Because if, if you are told enough times, oh, you just won't understand. You won't understand me. You won't understand me. You don't understand what I'm about. You're never going to understand. No, 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 no. All right, fine. I'll, I'll stop trying to understand then, dickhead. Fuck you. That that's going to be the reaction from most people, and Gaules knows that because you know if there was a if there was a global community where there was a bit more connectivity between the rest of the world and the Brazilian scene, Gaules would only lose from that. Gaules would only lose money because of that. He has constructed a functional monopoly for himself in Brazil. He has driven all the other casters away. And, and there is no incentive to become a Brazilian caster now because Gaules' company, Omelette and Il Tribo, they own everything in Brazil. They are the official Portuguese language streamer for every esports event. And so if you're not in Gaules' orbit or Gaules himself, you have no chance of a career. So there isn't even a reason to become a caster. And he knows this. He's many things. He's not fucking stupid. So he wants to stoke division every time he gets an opportunity. Because as long as he's sat on fucking dickhead island, but, you know, and, and like, oh, I am the only person who fucking really understands us and I'll be our leader and the rest of the world hate us and they're all gringos and all this. As long as he's doing that and getting that fan worship, he's making money. He's making millions. And to use the World Championships account Counter Strike to further that agenda? I'm sorry. I think that's really fucking distasteful. You're never going to find me otherwise. Like, you're never going to find me thinking otherwise. For me, this was the opportunity for all of the 
negativity towards Brazilian fans and all of the negativity from Brazilian fans to be dissipated and for us to get a bit more of a mutual understanding. Hey, you ran a great event. Thanks for supporting all our teams. Hey, you're not so bad, gringos. Hope you'll come to the next one. And we could have built from there, but not where Gowlers is concerned. He doesn't want that. So he essentially told everybody in the crowd, ESL says you're, uh, you're a bunch of cheaters. They'll never understand what it is to be Brazilian. They don't even speak Portuguese. Of course, they couldn't run an event in Brazil without having lots of Portuguese translators and Portuguese staff on site, which they absolutely did. So this was the first problem and the first instance of the crowd cheating. And they took measures and it mitigated it. But it was incredibly painful to do. In fact, there were some players who had huge balls. Because one of the other things that sickened me about this tournament was all of our small market organizations. They went out there and they basically said, listen, this is a good opportunity for us to build fans, sell merchandise, win hearts and minds. And so they all turned up there, didn't they? Heroic, mouse, they're all wearing the colors of the seller sow. And they're all fucking, you know, hey, hey, what up Brazilians? And uh, yeah, they didn't even come to your games. Like, in fact, they cheered for Furia during your games, right? So... It's a little bit embarrassing, honestly, but some teams had massive balls, and you gotta love massive balls. Team IHC, Mongolia's first team to qualify for the major, they obviously had a win there, and they said, listen, the crowd was cheating when we played 0-0 Nation, and it sucked. And they said it, and they said it in the post-match interview. So not, you didn't have to be a complete pandering pussy the whole time. This is an organization, by the way, probably the smallest there. <laughs> probably the one that really needs the money in the fan base. They weren't going to lie. They didn't lie. They didn't gaslight people about what was happening at the event. And yeah, the happy ending there, of course, is IHC still won. All of that was popping off. But generally, I have to say, at this stage of the tournament, the atmosphere was really good. When a Brazilian team was playing especially, but actually, because at this stage, there was only 4,000 capacity, they generally filled it. And the atmosphere was generally good. It was a bit flat in some of the other games. I get it. Not every game is going to wet the appetites and get you all excited. But I thought, in general, what was good uh, was this stage of the tournament. And I've said this many, many times. If you have a small venue and it is full, you can always do more with that than having a big venue and it being empty. Because 4,000 people in a 4,000 seat stadium is rad. The stadium is constructed for the acoustics. The seats aren't empty. You can do wide shots and it looks bigger. The human mind can't quickly count all of those people you know it's how movies get you when they do the cgi you know and you oh, look at all those people there and it's like the same model you know like put everywhere but your brain just can't quickly count it enough so it looks great it sounds great Four thousand people in a twelve thousand seat stadium looks like fucking ass and sounds like fucking ass and so this stage was actually probably in terms of the crowd the better stage outside of the furia games of course. So I thought in general, there was lots of good stuff here. There was like drumming, air horns, something that sounded like a Vuvu Zayla in the crowd. Good atmosphere. Generally a good mood up until the point where ESL said, listen, can you all just stop the cheating a little bit? They even put out a separate statement. Here it is. ESL take action uh, to stop crowd influence at IEM Rio Major. And you can see the statement down here. Over the last few days, there have been incidents which we believe to have put this at risk. Uh, integrity, that is. Uh, we felt the need to remove the minimap and x-ray view for the on-site audience to protect the integrity of the tournament. And of course, Art from Furia said, No! We can't hear any call-outs at all! Despite, obviously, the multiple clips that prove to the contrary. Because Art is a liar. So, that's fine. But yeah, in general, I thought this stage of the tournament was still... Uh, pretty good. Another reason why the crowd had sort of negative sentiment towards, to, well, just towards the event in general, and that was that uh, the, the the coach from Furia sort of was complaining against Gwery's suspension. And my understanding is that I think this was mentioned on the official co-stream on the Portuguese stream, which would contravene Valve's rules you know you're not supposed to have any of that suspension talk or any of that stuff you're not supposed to feature anyone for example on the co-streams one of the rules you agree to is anyone that isn't in good standing with valve anyone that is banned by valve even if it's a temporary suspension 
they're not allowed to come on to the broadcast. That's something you have to agree to. This is what Akari you know, from Fury, who was acting as their temporary coach, said. And he said, I think that I have arrived late compared to you guys in the esports scene. And you guys have been doing this for a long time, doing it with mastery and always evolving. And he's talking about Gaules there. You're doing interviews with microphones, cameras, etc. The Counter-Strike community does not stop evolving. And I believe there is one piece that does not evolve. And that piece is Valve. And it's really sad to see this, man. I'm there behind them, taking the space of someone who gave his fucking life to this. He only does this 24 hours per day, and we are witnessing a sad scene, not a good one. Obviously, after accepting the offer, you tried to help and everything, but it's shameful to have a professional poker player behind the boys, because Valve did a shitty job. It's really bad to do this. In my modest opinion, Valve had a chance to impact this whole young generation here in a positive way. They need a leader. We don't have leaders in politics. We don't have leaders anywhere. And when someone does the correct thing, like a pocket and query, instead of them fucking valuing this, they go and punish the boys and it gives a terrible example to everyone. So what this is referring to is obviously Gwery received a five major, I believe it is, a five major ban. I think he had five demerits. Uh, under the old ESIC rules for, ex for alleged exploitation of the coaching bug. But the problem with that was, first of all, when the bug occurred, he wasn't at his desk. Second of all, when he realized it was, he went and notified someone about it. And they just said, it's I, don't worry. And then it was found many years later when Michal, the admin, and Mr. Steven Dudenhofer went through all the demos and were able and used an algorithm to identify every time the coaching bug occurred at that point he then confessed and said yeah the bug did occur and i did this and i did that and isik gave him like a fucking super heavy penalty isik then withdrew that penalty but this was after valve had already agreed we will honor the isik bans isik had recommended to valve listen we're, we're rescinding the ban now will you do the same well valve don't go back on things generally as a rule because optically it's terrible so ultimately i agree valve fucked this up is this a topic to be talked about at the major itself you know hey the 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 company that's providing this <laughs> our dog shit uh, and it was really weird because when jane won he got on he, he got on stage and said oh can you unban my friend you know he's only using the skin change it's like god that's so fucking cringeworthy like you're a world champion for fuck's sake why but you know it's another area where isik had failed and another instance of where like it just shows we don't really have the infrastructure to issue these types of penalties especially when we're saying to valve no 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 no, we're, we've got this we're totally right we're totally correct and then obviously valve go okay we'll honor it then and then we go oh sorry we fucked up and valve go well what are you gonna do so i agree query got it particularly harsh but equally as well i just don't know if this is like the major itself is the appropriate forum you got a lot of influence you got a lot of clout you don't need to poison the well of the event by talking about it at the event you know if you feel that strongly about it you can boycott the event you know and then everyone gets uproarious but obviously you didn't do that you went to the event, you want the prize money, you want the stickers, and then you get up on the mic and you say, yeah, Valve are a bunch of assholes. That don't really work for me as someone that won't take the money. I, I, I want to be free to criticize, and I don't take the money to ensure I'm free to criticize. You can't really have your cake and eat it, unfortunately. Uh, not for me, anyway, but what do I know? I will never understand. Next up, yes, things were getting a bit naughty. Things were simmering away. Things were percolating. Then this happened. This was a report on Dust2 US. ESL had to remove a fan for threats. It was in a statement sent to the press. ESL confirmed that a fan was removed due to threatening uh, players. You can see here. I'll just read the full report. Uh, Brazilian fans are some of the most passionate fans we have seen in CSGO. And look, uh, this is garbage. By what, again, by what metric? What, by what metric? Like, I'm so sick of this. Like, it's so stupid. If you want to criticize a fan base, criticize the fan base. If you want to criticize an event, criticize an event. If you want to criticize an individual who happens to come from Brazil, do it. You don't need to preface everything. This is what I mean. They're the most pandered to fan base in world esports. You don't have to preface everything. Because here's the thing. ESL kept saying all this tournament... You're the best. Look at the best crowd in esports. Look at the best crowd. Look at the best fans. They kept saying that, right? All in the broadcast. Go back and watch the VODs. 
If you say that that crowd is the best, you are saying fuck you to Cologne. You're saying fuck you to Katowice, previously the best, according to Carmack. You are saying fuck you to every fan that ever comes to another ESL event ever again. Because if you ever call them the best, you're probably lying. Because you said it was these guys were the best. Were we the best? Are they still the best? Da -da -da. Pandering bullshit, insulting bullshit. You gotta be super careful about what you label the greatest of all time, the best of all time, the most passionate of all time. Because if you ever wanna repeat those phrases for anybody else, people are gonna say you're dishonest, you're disingenuous, you're a shill, you're a liar. So it's it's ridiculous when who wrote this? Was it Ryan himself? Of course it was. This type of editorial, and that's what it is, it's editorial, this type of editorial has no place in reportage. Yeah, of course we all know Brazil are some of the most passionate fans. Do we know that? How do we measure passion? Anyone, does anyone know what the unit of passion is? Can anyone explain it to me? No, this is garbage, this is nonsense. Anyway, whatever. I shouldn't be handing out journalism lessons for free. If you want that, you can always come to my course at university. Strongly recommend you sign up. <laughs> um, anyway, but it appears that one fan has gone too far. On the final day of the challenger stage at the Rio Centro, a fan was removed for causing and making uh, cursing and making offensive gestures, according to Just Do Brazil. The individual was a 16-year-old student who was removed by security and is no longer able to enter the arena throughout the day. In a conversation with Just Do Brazil, the fan said that he has interacted with foreign players since Monday and that the players would even respond with jokes as well. He was unclear who asked to have him removed and that it happened at the beginning of the Vitality versus OG matchup. ESL confirmed that the person was removed due to such conduct. The fan was removed by security for constant verbal and physical threats that were sent directly to the teams on the opening days of the event, which ultimately led to him being removed. The teenager stated he was unaware if the request was made by the players uh, on, the t on the teams or if it was from any member from a previous team that he interacted with in the last two days. When talking to Dust2 Brazil, he said, I arrived to support Vitality. I cursed OG a little. And then at the first pistol, two security men arrived asking me to leave because someone asked me to leave saying they wouldn't play with me up front. The student believes that he was probably removed for mimicking a sliced neck, also known as a Grim Reaper. <laughs> when he moved his finger across his throat, he iterates that it was simply a joke and not meant to be taken seriously. They got it wrong. Apparently, it was the Reaper's gesture that made me be taken away from the Major. The guys took it with malice. They didn't understand it was a joke. The young fan explained that since he has been expelled from the Rio Centro, he is sorry for his conduct, but also says that if he hadn't been punished, he would probably have carried on. If you ask me now, I will say that I regret it because I was expelled, but I would continue cursing. Yes, a little less for sure. I would continue to support Brazil. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, and then look, this is a thing. In football, okay, I've been away. I've been away on those European games back in the day. I used to go I used to go to away games in the middle of the fucking 90s, you know. And I've been, I've been away to Europe. I've been to like Zagreb, you know, and, and I've been to places like that. That type of behavior from fans is normal, at a, it, you know, when, when you're in a heated game or a heated derby, certainly in the European games, English fans have terrible reputations abroad. All of the, there's loads of firms in Europe that were always looking forward to getting their hands on the Brits and showing them what real hooliganism was, right? So you used to sit there in the away end, right? 3,000 of you outnumbered massively. And yeah, everyone, they're doing this to you, let alone the fucking players on the pitch. And so for me, uh, I get it. This was probably an overreaction. But equally, I understand the bind DSL are in. I wish players wouldn't do this in esports. And I've said this before. I got called xenophobic. What else? I got called xenophobic because there was a Brazilian influencer who said, if Zombs from Valorant comes to Brazil, we will teach him the meaning of Apavoro or whatever the fuck. And that means to terrify, right? The act of terrifying people through intimidation. And loads of people would message. And I said, I don't think players should be terrified to go to esports events. I, I just still believe that and loads of brazilians replied going this is xenophobic you don't understand you will never understand brazil you don't even speak a word of portuguese that isn't what it means it means to uh, intimidate people and yeah that's the point <laughs> you intimidate them to the point of being terrified 
And I had Brazilian translators, like official Brazilian translators say to me, no, Richard, you're absolutely right. You're being gaslit right now. It's definitely what it means. Don't back down. So I'm like, right, okay, good. An actual official official translator I know gets hired to translate Portuguese for all the esports events, you know, and other and, and stuff outside of esports. I had, I had another translator from outside of esports that just happens to follow my account go, yeah, Pavaro means that. Like, don't worry about it. So anyway, I don't think people should be intimidated to go to uh, esports events in the same way you should be at a sports event. Like, generally, sporting events, there's families, and then there's the, the assholes, right, who, you know, want to get pissed up and be a dickhead. And you, never the twain shall meet, really. Like, the families generally are away, and everybody understands. Don't do it around the kids. But if you want to go and have a chant and call each other dickheads and give yourself that, you all do that at a football game. The problem is, with esports, the kids are on fucking stage. <laughs> the kids are on stage. The kids are the people on stage. With competitors as young as 15, I don't think it's appropriate for us to have this, like, cauldron of hate and hostility in the same way you do with a sports event you know i don't like it i, I you know i don't mind it in mma I, I think chanting at mma you're gonna die is a bit tasteless because people do die in the ring in combat sports but you know uh it's for me chanting you're gonna die which they did <laughs> the brazilian crowd were chanting that in multiple games against brazilian opposition it's worse than an esports game why would you want someone to die why would you want a teenager to die <laughs> Just because he's playing a video game against your team. Nah, I don't like it. I really don't like it. And um, unfortunately, this is an extension of that. Now, probably an overreaction, but I'd rather we erred on the side of caution. We've seen at Antwerp, there was that nutcase, that fucking fanatic fan who was on a fucking Discord called, the, what was it, the Fighting Fanatic Club or whatever it was. And that, by the way, is a direct reference to like, you know, Khabib's camp and stuff like this and he was a guy who like he fancied himself as like an mma dude and he he tweeted out one time oh i've gained access to the fucking secret player area been here every day and no one's thrown me out it's like that is so dangerous and someone is gonna get hurt we've already had a shooting at an esports event in america we've already had bomb threats we've already had fucking people getting swatted let's get smart about this for real but naturally, you can imagine the reaction to this. Oh, when Brazilians do it, <laughs> you throw us out, you European gringos. It's like, nah, I'm pretty sure if I was doing this in the front row at Antwerp, I'd probably get thrown out as well. I'd certainly get talked to. Anyway, this led to probably the most mental thread uh, I saw on Reddit. Lots of these threads got deleted. The mods were on constant vigil to delete threads as soon as possible any thread that was uh, pointing out what the crowd were doing with clips of cheating they disappeared threads where the brazilian fans were getting too butthurt they disappeared so a lot of this you had to capture an archive which i was doing at the time but after all of this after the fan was thrown out after the cheating x-ray stuff check this out for a thread just pure schizo post brazilian crowd and the colonizer moral superiority Oh boy, seeing all the posts about cheating and bashing the crowd, which has been nothing short of amazing, puts into show how some people, especially from Europe, just like in most of human history, love to view the other as an undeveloped barbarian. The cheating, in air quotes, is just a passionate crowd, scared and yelling, which happens everywhere, doing their best to send their energy to the players. It's just ridiculous to believe there is some orchestrated action. What does not happen everywhere is the amazing party in display. The chants never stop, winning or losing, because to us, especially with the old guard, winning was never the goal. It was all about finally having a chance of celebrating their achievements with them. Both teams went 0-3 and received standing ovations with Warrior Chance. It's frankly sad to see so many people, not the majority, in this community claiming moral superiority and bashing this amazingly passionate crowd. You can have your superiority. We prefer to enjoy the party. So, 
one thing you will see lots of and so i'll just establish it here and then not have to tag it again throughout because it will come up over and over again you are going to see the emergence of this grievance culture in brazil which is that they hate europe they hate europeans for being like colonizers and not understanding them and being ignorant gringos just on the, just on the just on the subject of gringo, here's what I think about the word gringo. I've heard the word gringo multiple times. It's really interesting because in, um, in like Spain and Mexico, they acknowledge that gringo is a xenophobic term. If they call you a gringo, it's essentially you are an ignorant, very often white foreigner. You, you, you know, you're, you're, like, you're a moron in, in a foreign land you don't understand. And it, they know it's a derogatory term. And when I talk to, you know, I got like, you know, friends in fucking Miami, you know, whatever it is. They all say the same shit. They all go, yeah, when we call you a gringo, obviously it's a, it's, obviously it's a racist slash xenophobic insult. They own it, right? When you get called a gringo from someone in Brazil, they say, no, 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 it's just our word for foreigners. It's all it means. Generally ignorant foreigners. And I'm thinking, like, hang on, right? <laughs> Americans have words they use for foreigners. <laughs> Derogatory words. British people have words we use for certain types of foreigner. And they're derog and all of them racist, by the way. All of them absolutely racist. I have never seen somebody make the argument, yes, we have a word for foreigner, and we only use it to denote when someone we don't like is being stupid, but it is in no way xenophobic or racist. Now, listen, if you're a fucking gammon in Britain and you go back in all the foreigners, yeah, 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 foreigners, 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 what are you? You're a xenophobe. That's just, it's just cut and dry. Like, it's done. Yeah, well, you know, the thing with Brexit is we've got too many foreigners coming over. He's a xenophobe. He's xenophobic. But you can't point this out. The other thing is <laughs> they say all the time, like, this, you will never understand. You will never understand. And I got, like, days of abuse coming into this review for the article I wrote where everyone, where all they said is, you Europeans, although 90% of them probably think I'm American because they just make assumptions, but loads of them are going, you Europeans are so cold and frigid and pathetic and you don't know how to party and have a good time. And I'm like, okay, you're now making xenophobic stereotypes, but you're not even making it about a country. Because if you said that about a Brit, I might go, oh, yeah, Brits are a bit reserved, aren't they, typically throughout history. I might say that, but they don't even make the distinction. They, they, it's all Europe. So understand the premise. The premise is this. You will never understand Brazil. One country. But they absolutely will understand your continent. And everyone on that continent is the same. Guys, come on. This makes no sense. This is ridiculous. This is absurd. You look stupid when you say stuff like this. It is an entire continent made up of dozens of countries. Dozens of languages. Dozens of history. This is, uh, uh, how, 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 how is it you, a Brazilian CS fan, can understand all of us? And yet, we, if we say, yeah, actually, you know, there's kind of this culture in there which we've been a bit unsavory and we don't, no, you will never understand. Sorry. You, no, never, never. You will never understand us. Simple as that. Don't even try. You'll never understand. We, we like to party. You don't like, you don't party. <laughs> no one's had a party in Europe in the entire history. What was that? Black Death, wasn't it? It was Black Death when we all got the plague. And then we just been sat around crying ever since, I think. I think <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. Like, so yeah, just, just like, just stupid, you know, like just a really stupid take. But there was lots of that. Then, uh, in a big game, I believe, uh, Keto was doing this to the crowd and like, you know, getting in their face and trying to, uh, trying to, uh, bump them up. This was referenced on HLTV. Someone said, very risky behavior. I can no guarantee for his safety, uh, but I wish him well. And uh, on Twitter, I think it was. Yeah, it got screwed. Well, it was a death threat on Twitter anyway. And then there was also this. People were like talking about the, the guy in the crowd getting thrown out. And there was a guy on, on uh, Twitter that made like a joke where I was just like, I don't know about that, homie. Here was the joke. So Complexity would not have gone 0-3 in the challenger stage. And then a, account, a verified account, back when verification meant something, uh, said, wait, are you talking about that complexity you lost to 0-3 teams failing to even qualify? Or the one who was eliminated at blast by a Brazilian team that didn't even make the RMR? Is there another complexity like EG, Green, Pink, etc.? I'm confused here, please clarify. Clarify. Oh, wait, maybe it was the crowd cheating who made them lose all of those games. Those Swedes, eh? Grim's lucky he didn't get stabbed at Stockholm. Yeesh! And I was like... 
Who's brought Stabbing to the table? Like, uh, well, why, why, why is that being talked about? But here's the thing. That guy, right? That guy was at the event, working the event. <laughs> and work, like, and he did a video, right? What, just watch this. I won't play the whole thing. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Mark here. A lot of people who follow me on Twitter follow me for my game development stuff. Uh, some people have uh, come to know me in the last few days as the eco supervisor or fiscal Giaco on the crowd at the Counter Strike Major here in Rio. And um, sorry, my my voice is like this. I've been screaming my lungs out as everybody else on the crowd on the first couple of days of the CSGO Major. But I wanted to talk to you, all of you, about something that is way bigger than game development, it's way bigger than Counter-Strike. Uh, it's about ourselves, it's about our relationship with each other, how we treat each other, and how things are perceived in our society. So I was like, okay, listen, he's made a bad joke on, on Twitter. That can happen to anyone. It's hard, <laughs> they can't all land. Especially jokes about stabbing. Uh, but he's recorded a video to clarify. And he's about to say, listen, it's about how we interact with each other. Like, you know, there's been some negative hostility and negative perceptions about Brazilian fans. And I want to address those and explain that, you know, we're all one community. And I was like, okay, I'm, di I'm dialed in for that. I'm dialed in for a message of peace and unity and harmony. Because as everybody knows, Richard Lewis is a lover, not a fighter. Despite that one time, I did have that fight at an esports event, which wasn't my fault. They started it. So, and love wasn't going to win that day, was it? So, look, listen. And stuff like that, and give you a little bit more of a perspective, so to speak, right? So, um, being Latin American, being Brazilian, it's something that a lot of people who have grown up as Americans, especially young people, right? Uh, Americans, Europeans, like, uh, you don't really understand how it is. And it is something that is related to being any kind of minority. Like, uh, I've grown up as a white, a perceived white dude here in Brazil. Of course, I'm not white for you folks, but in Brazil... Now, what I've done, like, like, immediately, this, it just doesn't pass. You're not a minority in Brazil. We're in Brazil! <laughs> like, you're not a minority. Like, it's, it's like, you're not even a minority in global terms in the Counter-Strike community. Because, you know, as you rightly point out, there's more people on watching, like, the Gaules Brazilian streams than there is watching the main streams. So, anyway. I don't consider white. Um, and that shapes how you see the world and how you see minorities. And how sometimes it's hard for, for me when I was growing up to relate to other people's struggles. And what people don't understand about racism, what people don't understand about prejudice, is that it's not usually like uh, about people in white robes and pointy hats, burning crosses and stuff like that. It's not usually like that. Most of the time, it's... Something, by the way, historically, that, just, that, that never happened in Brazil, did it? That never happened in Brazil. <laughs> that never happened in Brazil. Pro violence, and that's what people who are not the minorities don't understand. Micro violence is something that is usually not perceived as invisible to anyone but the targets of that violence, right? So when we say, "Hey, dude, we feel like this is prejudice against us Latin Americans. This is prejudice against us Brazilians." And you, as an American, you as an European, you say to us, bullshit, don't play the victim card, you're overreacting, this is normal, this is the definition of racism, racist violence that we see every day in all of our societies, right? So when a minority tells you... So, classically, we've had, we've had a set of rules constructed where there's no way to win. There's no way to win. If a Brazilian person says something that you disagree with and you go, look, I don't agree with that, mate. That's micro violence. That's racist violence. If you agree, then yeah, I guess, I guess we'll let that one slide. But also, when you agree, understand, you will never understand. So that, they're the rules. They're the rules on the table. Oh, I agree with you. Sorry, you don't understand. I disagree with you. That's racist. Fight. Brilliant. I love this game. Like, I, what a what a wonderful fucking game to have to play. Anyway, just to talk on a positive issue, I've got to take my hat off to Fallen, of all people. Fallen did put out a message on the official stream. And because to address the sheer volume of the fans 
you know, doing these cheating incidents and doing these call-outs. Fallen, there was a little pre-recorded video, I think it was, and, and they showed it a few times. Uh, I've got a timestamp for it, but uh, I, I, like, I, I, Twitch always interacts weird, and I don't know what will happen with OBS, so I'm not going to do it. But anyway, uh, hi guys. The Rio Major is finally starting. It was really hard to make it happen. A lot of sweat was put into it. Everyone here has a huge respect for the game. And here in the arena, I know the crowd needs and wants to be part of this party. But they need to be conscious of how they do it. I've been to tournaments where the crowd tried helping the home team or a team they like in a wrongful manner. That doesn't allow the match to be determined by the game itself. It doesn't do it justice. We always want the better team to win and obviously for the crowd to show their energy without influence the result so to be so be careful to not cross the line of what's right and wrong because we need to set an example and show that the brazilian crowd is capable of not only throwing a great party but also respecting the game i'm counting on you i'm sure it will be a great tournament and let's do our best so just to make it clear even though no cheating took place ESL took measures to stop the cheating and fallen put, put a speech out asking the crowd not to cheat so don't ever get gaslit on that issue. The crowd was cheating. That's like, act, just facts. So we're now up to the, I think this was like the final uh, week. So yeah, uh, when Mouse were playing uh, against Cloud9, right? This, by the way, was an important game at this stage of the tournament. Mouse versus Cloud9, big deal. Somebody wanted to make it clear that Gaules did indeed ask for the fans to move into the arena there was a thread about it on reddit you can see here gaules asked to move to arena and support mouse uh, in the last map of mouse uh, mouse with cloud nine gaules asked for people with tickets to move from the fan fest to the arena and support mouse soon after many people did his influence is incredible so yes here's what actually happened again guys uh the fan fest was completely wrecking the actual main event mouse versus cloud nine and it was super important game within the context of the tournament had an empty stadium and so esl said to gaules can you ask fans to come inside just for the final map or something and he reluctantly did it that's what happens <laughs> so just so you know i don't think this is a good thing i think this is indicative of a bad thing i think this proves that there were problems uh with this whole fan fest conception which again i talk about in my article but uh you can see even reddit was starting to get the picture the penny was starting to drop and there was this thread where you can imagine cope levels off the chart, but the fan fest is compromising the major. As I showed in my recent post, the reason the arena is currently so empty is due to the fan fest event going on outside where Gowlers is narrating the game. The problem is that the event outside the arena is by all intents and purposes much better than the stadium experience. The only two possible solutions would be to get Gowlers to narrate inside the stadium or to cancel the fan fest completely. This production has been so weird and indeed this guy has really understood the problem in a nutshell it's a sensible post because look as i said in my article and now we can get to the infamous uh, article which by the way i'll just point out all you need to know about the article is esl used the this image they this was the artwork they used to promote the the fucking major look at it it's gaules on a giant fucking jumbotron waving to like a, a, a ridiculously massive crowd outside the stadium like that was their promotional material it was on the official esl announcement yeah so I, I don't know if esl commissioned it it says at the bottom who painted it and stuff but that was on the hey we're gonna have a gaules fan fest everyone and that was the picture it's like oh my god like so let's scroll through this and get to the important bits and just to show everybody because brazilian fans haven't read this before attacking me because oh this article made the news in Brazil. <laughs> Not only did it make the news in Brazil, it got posted on the official Il Tribo Gaules Facebook page. So you can imagine the Coralho levels. We'll, we'll come back to that picture a little bit later on. Here it is. So I want to talk about the speech he gave. So this is the crowd outside, by the way. And I'll show you a clip of how good it was at the fan fest. But the key component is, and this is why I don't blame the fans. One has to believe the fan fest had to be part of some previous commitment. Because as an idea, it's beyond stupid. 
You put Brazil's largest esports influencer outside in the glorious Brazilian sunshine next to a beer tent, and then you have him in front of a massive screen showing the game with a better view than you could get in parts of the stadium. Oh, and the tickets to attend that were cheaper too. What did ESL think would happen? Empty seats were guaranteed, and the terrible optics that came along with them. The UNES Arena seats 12,000, which would be a staggering crowd to sustain for an entire tournament. But to create a more appealing option, a local fans, and place it outside? Just incredible. So, I don't blame the fans. <laughs> like, I don't. Like, do you know what? If I'd been at that, uh, that event, I'd be outside with the fucking sun and the fucking beer garden myself. I wouldn't be sitting in a stifling stadium in humid heat. I wouldn't be there. I, I, like, it's as simple as that. I'd be out jumping around, watching the games, tanning beers, launching beers in the crowd, treating it like a fucking... I'd be doing that. I'd be right there. I know Brazil think Europeans don't know how to party. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm part Brazilian deep down. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe I've got some Brazilian in me I don't know about. But I know how to party. I know how to have a good time. So I don't blame the fans. Like, what a ridiculous choice. And it just proves, moving forward, what they should be doing is they should absolutely have Gaules in another city and do one of these live events. But what they cannot do is have him at the event itself. And especially, by the way, for your fucking Intel Extreme Masters Tour, if you want to shortchange your sponsor, if you want to shortchange one of the biggest sponsors in fucking esports, which, by the way, you have done with shitty IEM Dallas, and now you've done it again with this fucking major, and, and you'll keep doing it, if you want to do that ESL, have at it, right? But for a fucking major, which is Valve's tournament, you can never do this again. You, and I hope Valve reprimand you. I hope they absolutely say, yeah, we read that Richard Lewis article. He makes some good points. Why was Gowles allowed on stage to say, our world championships are not for everybody? Why? <laughs> like, why was that ever allowed? Why did you keep giving this guy a fucking microphone after he mugged you off? And anyone else would have been pulled from broadcast. Can you imagine if Thorin on an ESL broadcast had said, part way through, ESL is shit and, and this tournament is shit. <laughs> like, essentially. What do you think happens to Thorin? Do you think he's on the next plane home? I think he's on the next plane home. So anyway, also, I want to just bring this up. Let me, <laughs> here it is. So another first for a major was that periodically Borba, that's Gaules, would deliver speeches to his legion of fans. One in particular had all the hallmarks of a political rally, with him animatedly waving his arms around while his colleagues either side clapped in sycophant of synchronicity. You had to save money, come from other regions of Brazil. They will never understand our country is bigger than their whole continent, he said to applause from the crowd. Some people are in college, are working. We came here to do a party for everyone. That's our visit card. They have already shown they are desperate to be here. Tomorrow, inside is going to be full. Outside is going to be full. All in the same vibe to make this the biggest party in the world. And the party is for Brazil. This is not CS. This is not a major. This is fucking Brazil. Tomorrow belongs to us. So, uh... I, I just don't get that. I, I just don't get that. I can't think of another country where that type of, vet, you know, that type of vitriolic speech would be welcomed. Like, if at the American event, right, like someone from America got up and said, tomorrow we're going to have a great party and it's going to be just for us Americans. <laughs> like, oh dear, oh dear, we're building a wall next, are you, mate? Yeah, it would make everybody super uncomfortable and it would be wholly inappropriate for a world fucking championship, right? You just wouldn't do it. You wouldn't, like, let's say, you know, it, let's say the shit that's going on wasn't going on. It was a Russian event. Yeah, well, you know, it's just for Russia. You uh, uh, uh. This apparently is wholly fine and, and appropriate for a world championship. Nobody said anything. Nobody reacted bad to it. Nobody put a stop to it. Ridiculous. So yeah, uh, Gaules did have an undue amount of influence over the tournament. It was ridiculous. But it did lead to some fucking good moments. Like, can you imagine if when the crowd, uh, when the when the games that they were watching outside would be like, imagine it was like this all the way through the tournament inside. Like... Uh
that's fucking great, right? Like, you can't argue with that. It's there. It's there before your eyes with the video evidence. It's just unfortunate that that, that could have been in the stadium. <laughs> you know, that could have been in the stadium. But you, 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 for some reason, like, the, the real madness is that the tickets were cheaper. Like, that's the madness. Like, wh what am I going to do? Like, you know what the Brazilian economy is like. You know, Gaules ain't wrong. People have saved up money. Where he's wrong is, he says, only Brazilians do this. You would never understand. It's like, no, I do understand, bro. Like, I, like you, I come from absolute shit. I grew up in one of the poorest parts of Britain. I know what it's like to go hungry. I also know from going to esports events that there are some people who save up for years to get to, like, their first esports event. It's not just some unique thing. <laughs> like, we all do it. When you say it's only Brazilians that do it, you are not encouraging understanding and unity. But anyway, that's like just a banging atmosphere. I would, I would 100% have been there. I would not be inside the stadium. The problem is that while that was going on, here's what the stadium looked like. <laughs> this was the first day. This was literally the opening shot of the record-breaking major, the biggest major of all time, the biggest party of all time. This is the opening shot as they swooped in to start the broadcast. That's outside, that's what we got at home. At this point, by the way, you absolutely could not make this the opening shot of your show. Like, a, a director has to say no to this. I don't care what you had planned in your rundown, you cannot do that. It looks terrible. But this, this crowd, I mean, again, it's a 12,000-seater stadium. So it will always look worse than it is when it's not full. But the, the, the problem is you are really announcing it to everybody. Yeah, it's falling a little bit short. And that's going to create the criticism. That's going to create the ill feeling. And then they had to pivot and they had to bring Gaules in. Now, this is the part of the stream where we're just going to, whoop, we're going to go back in time. Okay, we're going to go back in time. Because I remember when the UNES Stadium uh, was announced, okay? <laughs> oh, this is the fun bit, okay? We're going back in time. I want you to remember when they announced the UNES Stadium, everybody in Brazil said the stadium is too small. So remember that image, burn this image in your brain, and other images indeed like it from the fucking tournament itself. And remember what they said. Now, I'll also just show you this. This is just a Reddit thread in general. But the reason why it's important is this user here, Murder Cat, or whatever his fucking name is, he's spammed the forums all throughout the You couldn't escape this guy. He literally was just gaslighting everyone. Nope, biggest tournament, biggest crowd, best environment. Blah, blah, blah. Like this guy, was just, he, he literally should have been temporarily suspended. But the moderators don't moderate. Anyway, sales started a little over 30 minutes ago. Everyone is still stuck in a purchase queue, not being able to buy. UNES Arena was obviously not big enough just by looking at its capacity and Brazil's love for CS. And they already had thousands of tickets from 2019, which people didn't refund. It'd surprise me if there's 10K tickets in total to be sold. Anything less than a 30,000 capacity is too little for all the Brazil major that is going on. And even that's not accounting for foreigners who will take the chance to visit Brazil and go to a major. There's too many arenas and stadiums in Brazil for such a dumb mistake. This should and will be the biggest major to date. Right? Now, I'm, you might go, oh, he's just a Reddit dickhead. And he is a Reddit dickhead. But it was sentiment echoed by almost like everybody in the fucking... Everybody from Brazil. Uh, the thing that they focused on was they wanted to have it in the Maracana. The Maracana is 50,000. They want 50,000. This is unironically what people were suggesting. So this is Fallen. You can see Fallen here. Uh, Fallen saying we need a bigger place ESL football stadium. Let's go. You can see here. Uh, Maracana, please. Yes, let's get the Maracana. Let's do it. So that was Fallen's take. Uh, Bolts uh, echoed this, I think. Uh, let's have it in the Maracana. I know that says major no Maracana, but what that means, like, it doesn't mean no Maracana. It doesn't. You get the point. It's Portuguese. FNX, you can see that says uh, it should be a major, could be in a bigger place and have more tickets. K Serato here. Move the major to the Maracana Stadium. ESL. Lucas uh, said we will get at least 40,000 people. 
for the major there he is there you can see there that's lucas there we'll get at least forty thousand. that was the promise uh we had uh, this is the official mibr account saying listen we need to be in the maracana wasn't just brazilians heroic king of the european panderers uh maybe you need to look for a bigger venue and then they look at the look at it look at what they are suggesting we could have filled at this fucking mate like how how fucking embarrassing is this like is no one embarrassed by the way I, I, i'm not even gonna do them all there are there are so many examples of this it is just unbelievable cringe look at how big the maracana is are you fucking mental on and on and on it goes there was just loads of this right you had this I, again just look at some of this stupidity this was the report by AFK Gaming. Largest stadium in Brazil declines to host. You can see here, Brokey, we need a bigger arena for, arena for the Rio Major. Brazil deserves it. Turns out, dickhead, you were opening fucking cases <laughs> and you didn't even get a play in it, did you? So, irrelevant for you. Simple. Football stadium or I'm not going. It's just absolute nonsense. So, on and on and on it went. Like I said, there's dozens of these. I'm not even going to bore you by going over them all. I've got all the receipts. All the big Brazilian influencers. All the European players that pandered to it. And absolutely, we didn't come close. We did not come close to having a permanently full arena at all. People on Reddit noticed. Because there were other problems in the UNES. Uh, it wasn't just the lack of a crowd. Because immediately on day one of the broadcast, there were audio problems. People were joking about the PGL sound guy. Wasn't as bad as Stockholm, the audio problems. But there was crackle going out on the mic. It was like crackling a little bit, bad, like bad audio. And the crowd mix wasn't as good. It didn't really translate on day one. They did again. They pivoted and fixed it. But you can see here, what an underwhelming opening to the greatest major of all time. Audio problems. Empty arena. No trophy walking. That was another thing. Why wasn't there a trophy walking? Right at the start like they normally do at events like what well, i just don't get it no team presentations and this is also true there was virtually no shoulder content at all at this major and i've talked about how much it boils my piss i mentioned it briefly in the gowles article but like it it, it it is like every team competing certainly by the legend stage they have to have their own hype video say what you will about pgl pgl had those videos right pgl did have them at antwerp and in stockholm they did have those videos they, they weren't here and what hype videos they played they got them wrong as we're gonna get to but yeah no hype videos and things like that literally just a frag movie with music i was expecting production like telling a story about the team and so on and this is honestly not it this honestly feels like a scuffed epl event in a big city and that's all hate me all you want but if this is what we show for the biggest major of all time, then we're really below the standard of the high level of esports. And of course, it's true. This wasn't up to the standard of majors in 2018, 2017. Uh, this wasn't up to the standard of like in a world's, you know, it was like everything was a little bit scuffed this year. It almost except the stuff Riot Games were doing. In fact, you know, I'll say it. The Valorant events I saw this year uh, were better than this. By, by some distance. Then, here we have one of the examples. This was sent to me by one of our regulars. So, Cloud9 versus Mouse is the game. This is the hype video. Then watch this. So you go, okay. All right, forget that. It was the stinger. Somebody pressed the wrong thing in, in production. Look at the stadium. Look how empty it is. Right? Don't worry, though. We're going to get something sick on the big... Here it comes. Sick. The real hype begins now. Bum, 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 bum. Here we go. Bum, 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 bum. Terminator music. Bum, 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 What are we building up to? What's happening? Okay, we managed to find a densely populated part of the crowd. We couldn't really... No, 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 no oh absolutely fucking nothing absolutely nothing that's what we got that was it that was the build-up for the cloud nine mouse game just a hard cut to silence and back to empty crowd shots now anybody if anybody tells me that's acceptable for a world championship get out get out I, i'm the new scoops get the fuck out my industry no way Come on, that's garbage. That's embarrassing.
PGL got crucified for a lot less than that. But let's all, let's just be real about it. People let ESL get away with fucking murder in this scene. EPL was garbage throughout. Loads of problems, loads of production problems. They promised to do better. Next event, we'll, we'll always do better. They have them stupid feedback threads, which by the way, I thought Reddit wasn't allowed you. I thought self-promotion and spam were against Reddit rules. After every event, a little ESLP on there. Can we have some feedback, please? Can you tell, can you fill in this ultra long survey? Mod, start banning that. Those surveys don't even have anything to do with the tournament that they just put on. They are worthless. Their events are of the consistent standard, whether they're on the road, whether it's an Intel Tree Masters, an ESL1, even a World Championships. So, no, this is trash. This is like, this is trash. This is just unforgivable trash. There's no way anybody can be proud of this. And it's sad because, again, I got friends at ESL, remember? Really love Apollo. He's a dear friend. But when you tweet stuff like, listen, people can say what they want, but I'm super proud. Don't be proud of this, brother. Don't be proud of this. This is nothing to be proud of. This is like 2015 trash. It's not even. Like, we could get the right videos in 2015. We could put out a promotional video to the crowd in 2015. Then, just, just, it, it, this is petty. This can happen to anybody. But, like, <laughs> Banks. Here you go. I saw this. This is just, this is classic. Banks. Banks. Right, look. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're, you're, you're a Navi Nation. You're, 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 how you doing with Navi Nation? Yeah, Navi Nation. It's me, Banks, with the Navi Nation. And I'm pointing at the door. <laughs> Who am I hearing? Who am I hearing? No, Banks. And then, oh, little peek through the door. Oh, I'm scared. Banks is outside. Banks. And of course, yeah. Fantastic. Not a whole lot to say there from the Mouse camp. I think we can kind of deduce that. You know, Banks. Ridiculous. And by the way, if anybody wants to dub that with something hilarious, strongly recommend you do. Oh, this was cringe as well. Turbo cringe. Now, sometimes, guys, there's a rule. There's a rule in this business. And uh, you can't force stuff. You can't force hype. You know, like, you, you, it's got to be authentic. And, man, here we go. What's, what, it, what is this? And how about the Brazilian crowd? Because they are cheering for you, you know? Yeah, here's the Brazilian crowd cheering oh for you. God, I'm so happy. It's good. And how about the Brazilian crowd? Because they are cheering for you, you know? Two people, my dude. Two fucking people. Come on. You can't. You can't do this. You just can't. Like, like if she says... The cameraman's got to know, like, uh, what about this Brazilian crowd? Doesn't mean literally go to, no, 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 stay on him. And he can go, yes, this is the greatest crowd of all time. Don't show that it's two dudes, like, because it looks terrible. It's terrible, like, you're just not making it easy on yourself at this stage. So that was the thing. Then, like, honestly, because it was so embarrassing at the start of the, like, at the start of the legend stage, there was some self-awareness from some of the fans. I saw a really good thread, and again, it was a good thread, and it got deleted, but I archived it because I, I, this, I'm always checking when an event is live. And I thought this was, like, just a reasonable summation of the event. It was from a Brazilian fan as well who attended. This is called What Brazilians Truly Deserve. Uh, I went to the Major. I stayed the whole time inside the arena. I shouted the best I could, but I am not enough by myself. I am ashamed. It is the worst first day of a champion stage in history, and that's Brazil's fault, our fault. I did my part and refused to even go to the fan fest so I could at least be one more person inside the Juness arena. I'm really sorry for outsiders and fanatic. The truth showed today is that Brazil doesn't love CS. We love our teams and above everything else, Gaules. Whenever I had free time during the day, I'd argue on Twitter with people saying it was ESL's fault that Gaules wasn't in the arena and that fuck gringos. <laughs> Okay, we all we all knew Gaules wouldn't be there. These people don't actually care. And it is all motivated by him saying they don't understand, like it's Brazil against the world. Also, our legend showed how they don't care as well by keeping every autograph session during the match time. Ridiculous. This was another thing I didn't mention. They had, if I wanted to get a player signing with like Fallen, that was on at the same time as some of these matches. Uh, that, that's like insane. As a fan, I have an option. Sit down and watch outsiders play. That is what, when you unlock the box from Hellraiser, that's what Pinhead shows you, an outsiders game, by the way. We have so many things to show you. Ah! Ah! Push my own fucking eyes in if I have to watch outsiders play again. Stop pretending it's good they won a major, please. But anyway, my choice is watch outsiders play or get an autograph 
with my favourite player of all time and Brazilian legend at the only opportunity I might have to do it. Again, ESL, what do you think people are going to choose? It's so obvious. Uh, in the end, what we deserve from now on aren't majors, just fan fests. I loved every piece of it, but I understand that our fans are not worthy. I went to the venue four days now, two for challenges, one for legends and one for champions, and I will go until the end. I'll treasure every second, every minute, because I don't think more majors should be hosted here. Casters deserve more, players deserve more, and Counter-Strike, above all that, deserves more. At last... Fuck Galvez and he's, he, this is a Brazilian guy saying this, by the way. Like, what was mad about the article I wrote? It was actually a 50-50 split with the Brazilians. Yeah, I got corral hoed. Yeah, I saw Van Peter's dick again. Yeah, I can't link you all the funny responses because there's just dicks everywhere. But about 50% of the, of the criticism I got, maybe 40%, but it was a decent split, were going, I can't stand this gringo, but he's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's where we're at. The Major disappointed even the people that wanted it to be so good. That's all you need to know. Fuck Gowles and his ego. I've been a fan for years now. He is a CS legend and unmatched in what he does for the game. But that's it. He is no Counter-Strike god. He gets his Tribonera in challenges and legend stages, which was great. However, he wasn't satisfied. Then he takes the arena during Furia matches. And, went, and then his Gowles TV staff takes all the caster slots. And now he wants to take all the crowd from... From the arena and keep them in the fan fest unless furia is playing or he thinks it's time to tell them go root for mouse like he did just at the end stop this bullshit maybe one day with blast or another organizer will show that we deserve a major but we haven't for now we have sabotaged ourselves we have disgraced the goddamn major we have put counter-strike and its players to shame i'm sorry obrigado you're a fucking you're a you're a legend i'm sorry your thread got d deleted I think this is a valid and balanced perspective from someone who was at the event. Now, there was some pushback, right? A popular Brazilian account. When I do this, they found a shot from the like the start of the uh, uh, Spirit game quarterfinals, like Spirit versus Furia, and they found this. And this is like you know midway through the first map on a weekday. But obviously, if you go look at Antwerp, in, you know, which is in Belgium, right? And there's two non-Belgian teams playing. From all of the weekend, the stadium was full. And it was a bigger stadium than De Jeunesse. I think it was like 16,000. But they circulated this. This got posted on Reddit like 20 times. Like, no, see, 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 you're, you were empty. You only complain about it when it's Brazil. Also, here's a fucking thing to consider. Did the fucking Belgian fans say we will deliver the best major of all time? In fact, we must be in a bigger stadium. Fuck it. We need to be in a bigger country. Fuck it. They didn't say any of that, did they? They didn't promise us the fucking moon on a stick. They said, like, yeah, it's great. Antwerp's a nice city. Oh, we got shocks. This is cool. Like, there weren't, like, an, uh, like I don't even know how they were. Like, Kevin De Bruyne wasn't there going, no, oh, this is an insult. It's an insult, it's an insult PGL to have it in this tiny little stadium in Belgium. Ridiculous. So, they took the decision, right? Here it is. ESL Brazil. Uh, don't worry guys, we're moving Gaules into the stadium. He's coming in for the rest of the event. So after the day one Legends disaster, we're moving Gaules indoors. And I do want to thank Gaules for one thing. Because he's really made me less self-conscious about my weight gain. So thank you for that. My rotund brother. But they moved him indoors. And like, what does this tell you? This is how fucked the tournament is. To get the fans into the arena, we have to change it so the guy at the fan fest is in the arena. And here's the worst part about this, okay? There were casters in the arena and they were doing a decent job. It was Portuguese language casters. Gaules replaced them. They just, no, sorry, you're not doing a stadium cast anymore. We're bringing Gaules in. So spare a thought for those two ladies that were doing that and their opportunities that got denied because we, we have to make it the Gaules show. Anyway, let's get to, this was the quarterfinals. This is awesome. Ten fingers, both hands. Major Listen to this.
I fucking hate this player. Right. So yeah, that's actually that's actually sick. Like that's actually amazing. But it only happened for Furia. And then the problem you've got is there was so much hype about it. Obviously, Simple had put out a tweet basically saying, "Don't boo us. Like we we love Brazil too." And that's stupid. That was pathetic. And I said that when we were streaming the No Majors Club. Booing to Brazilians is as polite as it's going to get, right? Like, it actually doesn't mean the same thing. They don't really give a fuck, you know? Like, a boo. Boo's the bare minimum you do to your opponent. And it was like, bitch made. Like, please don't boo me. Like, you know, fucking grow up. Like, but anyway, here was, uh, and as he left. The, the second one. So this is like after... And, you know, this is like the greatest player of all time, going out of a major, he's just lost, and there wasn't any respect after the event. It wasn't like, okay, standard ovation, it was all banter. They were flipping him off, and as we'd later find out, they got spat on between maps as well, which I'll, I'll bring up the tweet for that. But I also heard there was like a rumor going around from like among all the talent at the event that like between maps, like... You know, people were, like, reaching out and trying to touch the players and, like, maybe slap and push them and cajole them. And, obviously, the security guards had to, like, you know, get, get between that. And they didn't want to talk about, like, that's obviously not been made public by anyone, but that's what I've been told. And it's like, guys, like, I, I just don't know what to say. Like, this is just fucking sad. It's just sad. Like, it's like, listen, if you want banter at an event, I totally support that. Like, you want trash talk, I totally support that. But... He's just lost, like, it's the greatest player of all time. Like, surely there's a bit of respect there, but like, no, none, none whatsoever. And I'll, I'll just point out as well, before the Na'Vi Fury game, and I got criticized for pointing this out, Gaules, he put a tweet out, and this video here was of his ridiculous speech where he said, it's all for Brazil. He showed a video of his political speech from another angle, and it says, they will never understand, uh, this is Brazil, tomorrow we will make it hell for them, for Na'Vi. And, like, he deleted that tweet. And it's like, hang on, I thought we were invited to a party. <laughs> like, I thought, I thought we were invited to a party. Loads of people, by the way, because again, these Brazilian fans that were attacking me, they don't seem to understand. Yeah, we have metaphors and similes and allegories. We have them in our culture too, by the way. Like, going, no, we don't mean hell, literally. We don't want to take them to hell. We just want to shout and make them have a bad time. And it's like, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> I, like, we... We have those we have words that don't literally mean things too uh, in our cultures. But here's the thing: if you invite me to a party, I don't want the party to be hell. And you know, listen, I personally believe invective like that riled up the crowd, and that's why Simple essentially got pushed, cajoled, spat. You know, they got spat on, and it's fucking sad. Right? It's majorly sad. Lost to Furia. Good luck in the next games. Disappointing with my individual performance and team performance as well. I felt I could do much more, but they didn't allow. Great experience with fans as well. Except for spitting <laughs> at our teammates after the first map. Thank you for having us, GG. And I think that's really classy from Simple. Because if I'd been spat at, I would have said, I'm not, I'm not playing. Like, I'm done. I'm out. I, I would just be like, fuck this. This is, this is ridiculous. To take that and to say... You know, great job, it was a great crowd, blah, blah, blah. Sorry I underperformed, he did massively underperform, he played shit, by the way. That, for me, is like, okay. While we're on Simple, can I also just show you the most pathetic thing I think I've ever seen? This was the day after this. So, there's a chance for those Furia fans to apologise and show some respect. But this was... Simples. But I think it's time. Uh, that player of the player decade of award. The decade. So maniac, I will leave the honor to you. Our CSGO player of the decade is Simple. Look at this. This is him being crowned the greatest player of all time in an empty stadium. There he comes. Of course, just yesterday. Now, listen, 
ESL carry a lot of the blame for this because you have to... Right. They did so much wrong with this. So the player of the decade thing, there was no hype around it. They should have been saying we're going to reveal like two a day or whatever it was from the tournament because they had like the top 13 and it could have been like, duh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da, who's going to be next? Da -da 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 -da. They could have had that throughout. And then you have to schedule the award probably before the finals as part of your pre-final show because theoretically that should be the biggest day as we know it wasn't but they have to do more with it and i said this this would have been awesome because device was the runner-up and device wasn't playing at this like eliza masters tournament that's going on right now he's gonna give that a miss if i was esl i'm on the phone to them straight away remember astralis is a louvre agreement team and i go like hey device do you want a free trip to brazil do you want to come out and give simple his trophy and high five hug him you know we'll we'll i'll get i'll get you next decade or something like that you know what i mean why not wouldn't that be awesome something do something with it but instead you had the greatest player of all time being crowned the greatest player of all time walking out in an empty stadium because you did it at a stupid time of day you did it well before the fury of semi-final you could have done it any other time and got a crowd and there was just no hype around it and this should be a, this should be a seminal moment in this player's career and it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. And I'll just add as well, just to add to the fucking embarrassment. Let me show you this. They spelled his name wrong. You can't, I can't get a bigger screenshot. But that, that I know it's like a screenshot for ants. But that says S-I-M-L-P-E. They, they, they spelled his name wrong on the walkout as if it wasn't bad enough there was no one there at the walkout. So for player of the decade, they spelled his name wrong. Cheers, lads. There was one other incident that marred it all. And people were like, oh, when's your video about Sadakist after your wrecked config? By the way, I'm under no obligation to talk about it. Uh, second of all, I say in that video, you would be you would be amazed how many people get drunk and act like arseholes at CS events and the days of rock and roll are over. I also say anyone acting like an aggressive dickhead, assuming that's what Matt did. By the way, the, the aspect of this that get that is forgotten about is that it seems to be there were people filming in a green room when everyone was shit faced and matt threw a frisbee at them right so i don't know like get get out the green room like don't have your cameras on in a green room ever unwritten rule not that it justifies the behavior but just fucking saying but anyway sadakis got sent home uh casting another weird shadow over the event and meaning that anybody that like sort of had any moral high ground about ooh potential incidents or whatever uh all of that was gone because it just says you see drunk and aggressive by the way great title for <laughs> the biography Sadik is drunk and aggressive at IEM Rio, threatened Brazilians working with Gaules. It's by Christian Slot again, the guy who did the config story. And you can see a couple of days ago, CS commentator Matthew Sadakis Trivet was suddenly removed from the CSGO IEM Rio Major. The reason an incident took place on Friday night involving Sadakis was, uh, was the only response to Jackson from ESL, who obviously wanted to keep the situation under wraps. Jackson, however, can reveal that Sadakis was removed after a scene that could have evolved into config V2 if security didn't turn up. Sadakis threw a frisbee at Brazilian streamers and smashed a TV. Jackson has been talking to several sources live from Rio. Apparently, talent teams and content creators went to the beach in the afternoon and had a ton of Caprinias. By the way, I've talked about this myself. A Caprinia, and I had a Kachaka once, a Kachaka, that drink. I told that story. Last, I, I, You've got to watch yourself with these drinks. These are fucking lethal, for real. Kachaka was the one that made me go insane and hack up my mate's bed with a samurai sword and essentially terminate the friendship. Um, but anyway, dangerous, dangerous drink. Watch yourself around them because they're so nice and easy going, ooh, yeah, this, this couldn't possibly be unbelievably strong liquor that I'm not used to. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, totally. Uh, so anyway, when they returned to the hotel, Sadakis went to a joint practice PC room set up for casters and talent. In the room, Gaules, a retired Brazilian CS legend who is now one of the biggest influencers in the scene, and other content people were present something that didn't please Sadakis, according to sources who were at the scene he was pissed they were in the room especially that Gaules had a stream on camera ready to record a source told jackson it was clear he was acting belligerent and aggressive he lashed out at the brazilian streamers being present in the english talent room the source continued and added that the brazilians were cool at first at one point 
Tzadikis threw a frisbee at the Brazilians and hit one of them. That incident escalated the situation. Multiple sources tell Jackson that the altercation ended with Tzadikis punching and breaking a TV in the room and berating an employee aggressively with private security and ESL taking him to his room and telling him he had to leave. The next day, Tzadikis woke up with a hangover and as a bonus, an early flight ticket back home from IEM Rio. Basically... Uh, you know, what am I going to say about this? I mean, look, dudes, uh, there's no excuse. Um, and it's a, and it's a shame because Sadakist is one of the best talents we've ever had in esports for commentary. But I think his career is over now. I think um, after the other after the previous incident and sort of climbing his way back, that being linked to alcohol as well, you know, it was a risk. It was a risk. But everybody in the scene essentially said, "This guy is so good. We're going to give him one. We're gonna we're gonna allow him this one indiscretion." And he apologized. And we all moved on. And there were so many people that really supported him. Obviously, you know, look, we don't talk anymore, but James Bardolph in particular was really uh, great in, in when when he was hired for, a, I believe, a face event. Loads of people said, like, you know, oh, how can he work an event? And James is there. And James publicly said, I hired him. Problem. That deflected a lot of the heat. Uh, on top of that, ESL obviously did it. Uh, a lot of people, like, you know, took him under his wing. And, you know, the narrative is he didn't cast for, like, two years because of that incident. No, he was at the next big event, actually. So that's not true. But he got his way back to the top. And it's funny, because on my previous video, talk about videos that aged well. I literally said, you know, I think Moses is, like, with him. But he's kind of, like, a little bit afraid and sort of held hostage. And he doesn't know what Sadakist is going to say or do. And obviously, we have this, this rock and roll thing. And for me, look, without saying too much about it, because I like Matt. So, obviously, I'm biased. There's always been this, like, weird rock and roll, self-destructive aspect to his behavior. Because I don't think he truly values esports. I think he values all the other stuff. The race cars, the photography, just le leading a good life. And so, you know, he he's he's always been somebody that could take or leave esports and i think it shows with some of his behavior you know he's never held back in doing stuff like this and you know it's you can't do it can't do it in a major and by the way what a ridiculous thing to do what you're gonna take on a bunch of brazilians in rio like are you fucking dizzy like what, what are you doing like so i mean absolutely the right decision from esl to remove him from the broadcast that type of fucking behavior cannot be tolerated at esports events no matter who it is by and you know people are gonna learn these lessons because the days of keeping all the dark secrets about things that went on at esports events there's too many cameras everywhere everything's live streamed tournament organizers have too much to lose so you're getting kicked to the curb and uh, that's not a pun about config so right let's get back into the major itself uh, we're rounding up broadcast talk now, I believe. This will be a bit of a mess. It's not in any particular order. So, I want to show you this. First, this was from the semis. So, this is Mouse uh, Outsiders in the semis. This little clip here. <laughs> All right. You're barking on the other side of the smoke. You're going to get a lot more back. Frozen. Alone in the round, 12 to 6 now. And you can hear them chanting for Furia. Outsiders gonna be in a game where Furia aren't even Mouse. in the building. Yeah, this is a massive lead. It just puts all the more pressure on Mouse to get going in that first gun round immediately. Put something on the board to slow down this onslaught. Frozen gonna try and save the Galil. James on the hunt. Now, what happened there, just so you have the context, is... The crowd was dead. The crowd was so dead, so quiet, right? Um, that I guess Gaules wanted to try and hype up the atmosphere. But because he's a nationalistic moron, he decided Furia chance would be appropriate in a game where Furia wasn't playing. And so as I expressed in my article, and I'll repeat the point here, right? Imagine your mouse, this is like the pinnacle of your career, and you're sat there wearing the yellow shirts of the Brazilian football team in a bid to ingratiate yourself to Brazilian fans, and they couldn't give a shit. They couldn't give a shit. And do you know how they would have given a shit? Why doesn't Gaules say, guys, like, this is what you do when it's a dead crowd on an English-speaking broadcast. This is what we do, right? We go to the crowd, we go, guys, who are you cheering for today? K Mouse? Outsiders? All right. 
Yeah, round of applause. Come on. You know, you try and hype up the crowd to cheer for the teams that are actually playing. He had zero interest in that. I don't know if ESL asked him to. They certainly should if they didn't. But the bottom line is he should have had enough contextual sense to be, this looks awful. Hey, guys, can I, you know, why can't, why can't Gaules do that? Why is it wrong for the guy in the stadium, the guy essentially casting the game to the crowd to, like, talk about the fucking game that's happening? Uh, it's mind-blowing to me. There's, like, no excuse for that. There is no excuse for that. Next, let's just talk about, uh, I think this was final day. This was a uh, striker from HLTV saying, hope the turnout improves. Yikes. And you can see just, again, just absolutely dead. There's no one, there's nobody in the stadium. Even OG referenced this. And you can see here. What the players see, empty stadium, versus what the fans see, <laughs> cocktails down by the poolside at the hotel. It was really underwhelming, the, the, the finals, like unbelievably underwhelming. Uh, but they did get one shot, like towards the end, where, let me just show it to you, in the interests of fairness. So on the last map of the final... You got this, and they did the thing ESL always do, where all the assembled crowd do that thing with their phones, and they film it, and then they go, they show that to sponsors, even though that's completely not representative of the event itself. It did fill up eventually. After a terrible show match, it's got to be said, I can bring that up. In the show match that they had, uh, it was Brazilian Legends versus Swedish Legends, and for, and. Because the Brazilian players didn't want to risk taking an L in front of a home crowd, they sweated it out. They'd even been scrimming together, they said in an interview, so they could just win, and win heavily. And it was just like, guys, like, please, it's a fucking show match. Please try and knife someone, or do something. Uh, just crazy. So, credit to uh, Moses, who obviously watches my content. This is what Moses had to say. Sniper away. It's not unreasonable on train. You have these incredible long corridors that you could be shooting down. As a, At 14 as a participant in many of a show match, this feels like one of those show matches where one team showed up to have a good time. Yeah. Have some fun and put on a show. And the other team are dickheads and showed up to actually try and actually <laughs> win the game. Yeah. Which seems unreasonable. Bringing back the dickhead. Uh, Moses calling all of those guys dickheads in Brazil. Maybe Moses has big balls. Maybe his head is a third testicle because he has so many balls. Who knows? Uh, but fair play to Moses for saying that on Brazilian soil. Anyway, we get to the final as we, as we showed. And that was that. Uh, outsiders win. There's a ripple of applause. And then suddenly, we're just into the world of the cope. Because people are like, listen, I don't think this crowd uh, was particularly good. And so, here come the excuses. Let me bring up all the excuses. You're going to enjoy the excuses. I'll just show you the last based post. It's relative to the clip I showed you. This also got deleted. All based posts were deleted. Gaules is huge for the Brazilian CS community and he deserves so much, but having him singing chants for Furia during Mouse Outsiders is just disrespectful. Like, I can't imagine how the players must be feeling. As a Brazilian, I hate this so much. Gaules simply doesn't give a shit about any other team that doesn't have Brazilian players. The fact that his influence is huge is actually hurting a lot i know it's not his style of casting but man you're in the fucking arena of a major semi-final and you can't hype the game just because there are no brazilians now it gets worse by the way because obviously gaules casted the finals and by casted he sat there just going oh jane there was no hype I and mean, this is what i mean about like the the sheer size of gaules and his influence is like it, it it's killed casting in brazil and they shouldn't have had him, like, they should have tried to come to some compromise for the final. As soon as they realized there was no one there, he should have just been like, all right, Gowles, you can have the day off if you want, mate. Go stream backstage or something, I don't know. And get some casters in the arena because it just didn't generate any hype uh, whatsoever. And let me see if I can find, there was one more clip I actually want to show you. Probably the crowd that sums it up, uh, the, the, the clip that sums up the crowd for me. Just absolute perfection. We're here from the Danes. BR crowd, greater than EU a, uh, crowd. Deagle, sure, Cuts to two people literally asleep in the crowd. 
I like it, it's it's too ridiculous. Like it's too ridiculous to, for even words. Gains. I, I can't even imagine well, it. A, yeah, I can't even imagine sure, like showing this and not and being absolutely embarrassed. That's during that's during a major final, guys. That's a major final we'll with people just sleeping in the crowd, despite well, it being yeah, a it's better crowd. Sure, apparently, sure, but it's like yeah, absolutely, uh, it's mental. Yeah. It's mental. It's mental that, that that that's a real thing that actually happened at the event. So, let's get to the cope, because afterwards, there was just so many excuses. Here was some, here was some cope about why they weren't there for the first match of the quarterfinals. People complaining about attendance at Rio Major need to take into account. One, if Major is in Berlin, people come from many countries to visit and cheer for the team. Did you do your part and go to Brazil? Logistics, dude. Two, Brazilians can't resist a party. Three, hangover from yesterday, because read point two. Four, Brazilians are supposed to cheer for more unknown teams at playoffs. Five, exchange rate is not even expensive for Europeans. Shame on you not coming to support your team. Six, it's hard getting Brazilians to do anything before four o'clock in the afternoon. Seven, it's the first major in Brazil. The XP from this will build better organization. Don't hate on the public. Eight, if you read HLTV forums, you'd think CS players are all 12-year-old racists with daddy issues. And then everybody got tagged in it to talk, to explain that. So that was like, that was like quarter, semi, that was semi-final cope. There was some semi-final cope. Like, remember, the tickets sold out in like, about, what was it, 10 minutes? What do you want us to do? Like, uh, uh, you know, like, you bought all the tickets, homie. Point of view, someone who went to the arena, and why it's empty for the non-Brazilian games. I'm not trying to make any new excuses. I'm just trying to show why myself, for example, didn't go to the first game today. And I think most Brazilian people feel like me. Yeah, Gaules being outside had some part. Yeah, the meet and greet with the old SK lineup had some part too, by the way, about this topic. I read one comment saying how hard it is to get a sign and go back to the arena. Well, it's hard when the line for it is almost, um, I don't know what that means, contourning. The, the fan fest, contouring, I don't know, whatever. But I think the real reason is how we cheer our favorite team is pretty fucking exhausting. We jump, we scream, we sing almost all the time. I got the tickets just for Friday and Saturday. On Friday, I went to both games, but at the final on the last game, I was completely with no voice and beaten. And Saturday, still with no voice, I just thought I will rest for the first game and go to the second one. The problem is we treated this like a football match. Imagine going to a football match, cheering for your team, but it's tripe. The time and games, it's this. In the last game versus Heroic, you saw how quiet we were comparing to before. And that's not because Furia was losing. Uh, crowd was loud, even when Furia was losing on Ancient. Gaules even recognized and said, I know you're all tired, but let's give some last push. Furia needs it. Yeah, yeah, he did it for Furia. Incredible. Uh, the Mage having so many stages with crowd surely had its part. Two separate stadiums. I have so much respect for the drum guys. There are there since the game one of the challenges day. Some of them even got ill at some point. It's our fault we treat CS games like a football match. But again, it's that way we are passionate about the teams we like. So there you go. It was just they were tired, guys. Like, you've got you've to understand. People were tired. We had this. The cope levels were so insane they had to invent imaginary scenarios unpopular opinion in a world that south america dominates the cs scene eu wouldn't give a fuck about counter-strike just imagine seven south american teams played the majors playoff i bet my house that the eu fans wouldn't give a fuck about the major the language and cultural barrier is something that people don't take into account when criticizing the brazilian crowd now of course we did li live through an era the europeans did live through an era didn't we where uh, you know south american teams were better than european teams and north american teams were better than european teams it did happen it did happen i don't remember anything like this up until now there was this ticket cope remember tickets sold out tickets were all sold out look there has been a lot of hate recently regarding attendance at this major but you've got to understand val vsl absolutely botched the ticket sales me and my friends all tried to get tickets and they were all sold out in less than five minutes it was later discovered that the event organizer let people pay via boleto bancario which roughly translates as bank slip where you don't have to pay at the time of purchase you have three full days to pay so that way you could reserve up to five tickets and only pays days later and that's exactly what happened most people who tried 
tried to purchase with credit cards or other methods, had to pro process uh, the payments on time, and it didn't go through. Most of the tickets went to be in the hands of insiders or ticket dealers, meaning scalpers, who sold on secondary markets for two times, three times the price, sometimes even more. This is why attendance at the knockout stage was disappointing. Tickets would cost a kidney here. Someone took a huge loss on those tickets. This is just live events. You're just describing... <laughs> sales for every live event ever like why would it be oh you've got three you've got three days to finalize the payment why would that mean you don't turn up is there any proof of any scalpers do we know is there any data is there any evidence but no it was the scalpers what were to blame then there was this little, again, just a bit of self-pity just at the end. Uh, no more excuses. English casting was absolutely stacked, entertaining and insightful from beginning to end. This is, yup, this is definitely proof. Global offensive users don't love CS, they love hating fans. This is a major tournament with a stacked casting table. I love this subs fans and at this major, and I'm not complaining since I found this major to be the most entertaining one I've ever seen so far. Definitely wasn't. Unequivocally was n the, one of the least entertaining majors. Uh, but people should just stop pretending that the majority of global Global offensive fans care about Counter-Strike. We all know it's about hate speech. I mean, four out of five of the most upvoted threads were this sub hating on fans. Have you guys tried finding the major final thread through top posts? Take the challenge, try to find it and tell me how difficult it was. This is because all international fans are not real fans. <laughs> it's us what are to blame. Uh, <laughs> don't care about CS and absolutely did not care about the major finals. What a pitiful last game thread this was. If these fans cared about the game, they would have stacked the viewing numbers, the discussion threads and news articles about it, but they would rather let the game die. No sense of responsibility for the longevity of the game whatsoever. Uh, how dare them. Right. Enough talk about the crowd. Enough talk about the uh, negatives of the event. Uh, I will say, let's talk about the content and talk about the performance of the broadcasters and the people who work there. Because I know, like, I, I want to end on a positive note because that's a lot to take in. And probably, so, you know, some of my fellow talent are feeling aggrieved. One of the things you'll always notice is that when talent are in the trenches, they'll defend the event they work at because it's like it's a reflection of their work. So they do have a tendency to get a bit defensive. And that's just one of those things. So listen, in real talk i thought considering all of the pivots that had to be made all of the changes that had to be made the fact that ultimately we're doing a cast for people at home i thought the guys did great first of all i i thought all the casters did a great job but the casters that did the best job and casted the best game and it was probably the the most dramatic game of the tournament was Fury and RV by Harry and Hugo. And, you know, I said they had one of the casts at the previous major was Spirit Phase, and that was amazing. But straight up, I thought Harry and Hugo aced it once again at this tournament. And I think in 2023, we now just accept they're elite level casters. They've been criminally underused in the space, and they're going to be used a lot more moving forward. Nobody had a bad cast. When Alex called in to the No Majors Club, he said that on quarterfinal day, there was like some tech issues or something, and it, he felt he was personally thrown off, and it wasn't a great cast for him. I don't know. I didn't really pick up on it. There was like a little bit of like tripping over your words, but nothing major. But everybody did a great job. Obviously, Scrawny and Launders did a great job as well. Anders had to come back into the breach. I don't think Anders got enough credit for that. Anders went to the event having to basically do something totally different. He was doing that architect thing and he got told suddenly you've got to cast with Moses again you've got to roll back the years and cast with Moses again and he did and uh, stepped into the breach the an analysis desk segments what I went back and watched again I'm gonna say I think the analysts did a great job uh, there was a bit more touchscreen stuff and weatherman segments still not enough in terms of construction for me there were some very awkward segments, but in general, considering the circumstances, I thought the guys did a good job. And the hosting was, you know, good. Again, under the circumstances, I think Stunner even managed to get a response from the Brazilian crowd at some point. So it was uh, all told, I thought the talent did a, did a fine job. I thought the talent f held up the the broadcast for the people at home because the broadcast for the people at home was bad. It was objectively bad. Tech problems right the way through to the final 
scheduling issues right the way through to the final. There was one moment, by the way, the grand final was 45 minutes delayed because there was a stage malfunction. They couldn't get those glass screens up. It was, you know, just like that. It was just one of those events where it wasn't really very polished. You factor in all the issues with the crowd. You factor in that, you know, we're, we're sat here watching games that have like a really muted atmosphere. Um, I don't know, maybe you have to pump in fake crowd noise at some point or something, but it was really poor for uh, the viewers at home, and like I say, I don't think it's going to be remembered as a great major at all, uh, no matter what people want to say about it, I think it's going to be remembered as the most disappointing major of all time, purely because, as you saw earlier on, what we were sold did not turn up at all, and they need to do better. Now, I don't think Brazil... I think Valve are going to look at that, and I don't know if there'll be a Brazilian major for a while now. Uh, it's just one of those. It was a, it was a swing and a miss. Uh, I will say, um, Sao Paulo might have been a better option. I, I, I agree with that. I think that's a fair take. Um, the timing could have been better. There was, like, loads of stuff. You've got World Cups around the corner, so people are saving money. You've got, uh, you know... Uh, Formula One was on at the same time in Sao Paulo. You've got the SATs happened on the same day as the final, the Brazilian SAT test. You've got the election. You know, there was so much going on that probably the dates were not ideal. And it really caused issues with, uh, with, with this being a successful event, taking the shine off it. But that's on ESL as well. I don't know. Their desperation to do this, like, pandering major to Gaules and Brazil to get viewership, to get numbers. You know, blame lies with them. Blame lies with Gaules. Blame lies with some of the fans, although not all of them. And I don't blame them for picking Gaules over CS. That's never a choice you should have to make. So that those are my thoughts, pretty much. I think that's a fair and accurate review of everything that went on. And for me, as I said, just the just shame. I really wanted this to be like a breakthrough major and break all the records. And, you know, in the end, when we had the final numbers came out, this was uh, from eSports charts. You can see uh, it was only 1.14 million peak viewers, uh, according to them, which happened during Heroic versus Outsiders. This later got revised and it was 1.38 million for Na'Vi versus Furia, which I think was obviously the game that was going to be the most watched. And, you know, when you look, somebody replied with, like, an XD. This was the Valorant finals, uh, the Valorant championship. So I talked about Loud versus Optic, 1.5 million. And I've said, you're going to see, the, you know, another reason this event had to be better received and better organized and not all about Gaulers was that, like, there's another Valorant event coming in Brazil loud obviously won that one that team's kind of broke apart since then but that org's been one of the growth organizations in world esports this year and so you are going to see more Bra younger brazilian esports fans gravitate towards valorant and it's you know if you can't run an event in brazil and beat valorant numbers that's that's a failure that is a failure it's as simple as that, especially when we were promised biggest of all time. And don't try and sell me it was the biggest of all time, because it weren't. So, that's that, right. So that is all of the broadcast thoughts.